Graham Potter's Chelsea are not doing well. I think they've won two of their last 15. And yes. at times, it's been very difficult to watch, JJ. That is correct. They're not playing very well. But the question is whether it's Graham Potter's fault that they're not doing very well mm. or whether he is being harshly treated. Would Chelsea be right to get rid of him or should they stick with him? Well, What's the manager's fault? I agree with that. Now, let's start at the beginning, though, because when they brought Graham Potter in, everybody used the term for him system coach. Yeah, very, it's still true today. What does that mean? It means that Graham Potter is a manager who has a very clear style of play. And that style of play uh, can be used to give his teams an advantage over teams who should be better than his. He went from uh, clubs like Ostersund in Norway, took them from the fourth division to uh, high up in the, the first division, competing against teams with far bigger budgets because he's making uh, decent players much better. Did the same thing when he went to Swansea for a very brief time. And then at Brighton, we obviously know that he's done very well there. And the Brighton team's left behind and performing superbly, based on a team who can play very well within his preferred system, of which he has a quite clear one. It looks a bit like a 3-4-3. It changes a lot, depending on who he's playing with. But Brighton are much better now. I mean, in terms of expectations that Chelsea fans would have of him or the, the Chelsea board would, ha would have of him, I'm not sure that those would really be different now to what they were at the beginning of the season. I feel like people know who Graham Potter is and what he does. The conversation around his legitimacy in the role is purely as a result of the bad run of performances, right? Yes. So let's discuss that specifically. Uh, but within that, I want to understand, are there elements that we think might be outside of Graham Potter's control? There are many outside of his control. A key one would be squad size that he has. Now, if we look to what he had at Brighton, that's all players that he's formed to form a team that he wanted to have that can play his set way. And they're all they're all working that way and they've left them very... They're not as good players as this Chelsea team. You look at this Chelsea team, it's very good. This Chelsea team is not a team, it's a squad. There are so many players that we can't fit them all on one side of the board, which is uh, important for a few reasons. First of all, player morale and keeping egos in check. If you have big, famous players... Like even Count Zakaria is a big famous player, but it's not hugely important going forward. How do you manage him not being in the team? He's a player that could be very important for other clubs that he played for. Right? Well, exactly. A great player. Like Kovacic has not played the last couple of teams, uh, games. And the squad size is so big, that as well as keeping the morale going, you've got to name certain players for a Champions League squad. And then you've got to manage this. For example, Bad Yashile has been playing at left centre-back. But because he's not been registered for the Champions League because of squad sizes, you've got Koulibaly has come in um, somewhere around here. So um, to make sure he was ready for a game against Dortmund in the Champions League, he played against Southampton in the Premier League, even though he's not playing very well, but he's got more experience and you have to keep players like him happy because they are the experienced key players. Yeah, and it upsets the balance, right? Yeah, it does accept the, set the balance and it means you can't, you don't have consistency in your team selection. So in order to maintain that morale, Potter has then changed his team a lot, a lot of rotations uh, from players who are starting each game, which means there's a lack of cohesion and players are unable to form nice partnerships on the pitch that would suit the way that they want to be able to play. Yeah. There's also the January transfer window. It's unclear uh, to me, at least, to the, ex the extent to which Graham Potter was involved in the, the recruitment. I'm sure he, he was. Um, but obviously, what we're seeing on the board here in front of us, the vast, vast majority of the players here uh, were at Chelsea before Graham Potter arrived. So is that also, to a certain extent, out of his control if he wants to play in a, a specific way? And if Chelsea have brought him in to do that, maybe there are players that aren't suited to that? Uh, potentially, yes. So what they lack, one of the things, is a striker, and that has a lot of effect on how you, how you play against different teams. A striker tends to pin uh, opposition uh, defenders back, and they also tend to convert their chances, and Chelsea's, Chelsea aren't performing well with their expected goals, which is one thing, and it's actually a thing common with other teams he's managed, like Brighton in the past. But what you do have um, is players like Mudrik, who you think would be a winger, but he doesn't really play with wingers, he plays a wing back. So you want to play Mudrik as a wing back because then you're a bit weaker defensively and you want to play someone like Chilwell. So if you put Mudrik into his left inside forward, what you tend to get with Potter's teams are a, team, a player plays further forward and there's two tens behind him, or it's the reverse. And then players drift in and out of that. And then you play, if you think about at Brighton, you had Lissandro uh, Trossard, who is now at Arsenal who could play as a right wing back or a left wing back and he'd often end up through the middle. Now they're trying to force players like Ziyech into a position that isn't really his. And what Potter inherited was a team who was playing a very specific style of play under Tuchel mm -hmm. and he's trying to change the system as well as the culture within the club. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Fine. That all sounds like quite sympathetic and I can yes. imagine Chelsea fans are watching this and thinking, okay, but also he has a part, he has a part to play in this himself. What can we say from an educated guest perspective, because we don't know what's going on inside the, the, training, uh, the training ground or the dressing room, what can we say maybe is Graham Potter's fault? Maybe that he could have done better? Uh, there's a lack of intensity in the way they play and the passing is far too slow. And you think regardless of what system you want to play, you need to put the principles in immediately. 
Like for example, when Tuchel took over from Lampard, the numbers improved instantly. The numbers under Potter are much, much worse. So I think you could argue things like um, expected goals being lower, uh, fewer passes per game, fewer passes in the final third per game, and having more tackles you have left of the ball are things that are relevant to how he plays. But you see it. There's little, little small things like uh, the, the passes they'll play from the back They'll often be short passes that go slow, so the opposition can get back into defensive shape and block them so there's no space. Another thing you could say is that they don't really press with any intensity, so it's hard to work out where they want to win the ball back. Another thing you could say is that players don't seem to know what it is they're supposed to be doing at certain times. So if you're trying to change the system and you haven't had a pre-season to, to change that, which he hasn't had, so it's both a two and a pro, a two and against him. That's You know what I'm saying? A two and a pro. A two and a pro. New saying, start using it now. Also, so you've got that sort of thing in place, right? Uh, and I've gone off my topic, but it's very close to being there. Mm. And when I get on the topic, it'll be really good. Yeah. And that topic is... Wales. Graham Potter having Wales in his bath, small ones, do they expand over time? Let yes. me change this for you. Let me help dig you out of the hole that you've, uh, you've sort of clawed your way into barehanded mm. and bloody fingernailed. The board now will clearly be sat there thinking about this conundrum, right? Whether or not they intend to have Graham Potter until the end of the contract, we, we have no idea. But because of the run of form, it is inevitable that there are conversations happening, however formal. What are the considerations that they would be making at this point in the season? The really important ones would be that if he loses the authority that a manager needs to command superstar egos like Chelsea have, then there's no real way back from that. You can't really regain someone's trust uh, conversely if they just keep him and the players realise he's not going to go anywhere maybe then that forges some sort of inauthentic trust which then becomes real trust over time mm-hmm. fake it till you make it Yeah, that could be it uh, so that's one, that's one of the key things also if the team isn't showing an improvement and maybe the difference in managing players uh, of a Brighton standard or Austin standard is different to managing superstar egos now, that doesn't mean you can instantly go from that club to a higher club uh, and suddenly start managing players like Thiago Silva, played at multiple World Cups, played at PSG for years and years and years. Players like Mudrik, who expects to be winning things. Joe Felix, one of the best players, well, best young players in the world, certainly at one point. Managing those are different to managing players who are shifting into a system with very defined principles of play. So when you start trying to tell Joe Felix to not make the run or the dribble he'd want to make, you start to realise why he doesn't get into teams like Atletico Madrid because he's also not doing what the manager wants him to do. And at some point you've got to figure that out. But if you're losing games along the way, you don't really get much time. And if they don't get in the Champions League, they don't have more money coming in to be able to facilitate uh, the purchasing of other players. But also other players don't want to go there to improve the team. That's the thing. I think that's the key thing, isn't it? When you, when you think about the summer transfer window, would there be players around the world watching Chelsea now who might have considered an offer, but now might be thinking maybe a different place? Well, that's me. it. Yeah. How do you sign new players? How do you see you're going forward and there's not cohesion? And one of the things you have, um, Potter's compared himself to players like uh, managers like Mikel Arteta at Arsenal. Now, if you look at what Arteta did, was put in a very clear style of play, which didn't work immediately, and there were loads of problems with it. We covered it on Tifa YRL. But he played a consistent starting 11 that he then improved by putting extra players onto it. Potter's inherited all the different parts of a massive jigsaw puzzle, far too many to complete the puzzles. He's trying to complete the puzzle, but there's too many extra bits from other board games that you don't need. You don't need the car for Monopoly to make a jigsaw puzzle, yeah. but he's got three of them. Mm, yeah, no, fair enough, fine. One other thing as well I would say would be, uh, presumably, uh, given that he only recently signed a contract, there would be an amount of money to pay him for him to leave. I suspect that might not be the highest of problems I for Chelsea. I would have thought so, but also if you consider their position within the Premier League table at the moment, how likely are they to finish in, the, in those Champions League places? How will the financials be impacted by the decision? I think probably is part of the consideration. Do you want to know what I think, though? What? Now we've heard from an expert. You want to hear from a, a real idiot? Yes. I think this is something that will come up time and time again. I think this is... Uh, a, a popular type of manager, a system manager, someone that people uh, can see what they're doing and see how that applies across different teams, trying to be applied to an elite club, right? And we're at a stage now where because the results aren't working, we are, we are sat here having a conversation about whether this man is going to still be in his job in a couple of weeks' time or not, right? That may very well be as a result of a bunch of stuff which is completely out of his control. Yeah. And even if the board decided to let him go, they might also do that knowing that it's not entirely within his his control to have changed the situation. Right? Yeah. That's just what happens in football. And I would just make the point, I think it's really important to not always equate being sacked with it being your fault. Because stuff just happens in the world that you can't control. Something happened to you today? No. I like Grandpa, though. Yeah, I like him too.
If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big clubs. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.